Where are we at this hour, you might ask? Well, we are at Cedar Lawn Memorial Park in Roanoke, Virginia, and it's only 6 p.m., but we are here to visit somebody. He died in 2001, executed. There were 66 murderers who were executed by lethal injection in the United States that year. Thomas Wayne Akers, a.k.a. Tommy, was the 15th, but also the first here in Virginia of that year. His crime was a brutal one. In 1998, on December 18th, he went with his cousin Timothy Martin to meet Timothy's friend, Wesley Smith, here in Roanoke, Virginia. Wesley was a well-liked guy. He was a good guy, had lots of friends, just 24 years old, and bloodthirsty Thomas who had just gotten out of prison four months earlier, was 31. Not sure Timothy's age, but anyway, Timothy and his cousin Tommy hatched up a plan to tell Wesley they were setting him up on a blind date. They wanted to pick him up and take him to a bar to meet her, but they never made it because it wasn't a blind date. It was more like a thrill kill. The three of them were in Wesley's car. Wesley was the driver, and somewhere along the way, Timothy and Tommy said they had to urinate, so to pull over, which... Wesley did. He pulled over safely and parked the car. And that's when Tommy in the back seat takes his pant belt off and wraps it around Wesley's neck and then pulls Wesley out of the car, drags him off the road down towards a creek and tries to choke him. But Wesley wouldn't pass out. He resisted and begged for his life. He fought for his life. And Wesley's so-called friend Timothy gets an aluminum baseball bat he saw in the car and hands it to Tommy. And that is when they took turns bludgeoning Wesley to death with that bat. He was beaten so viciously. It was savage. Wesley was unrecognizable in the end. It was a resident who happened upon Wesley's body the next morning, and he called police saying he found a body in the field. Laboratory testing established that it was Wesley's blood on the bat, and forensic examination of his body revealed that he did not die instantly from his multiple skull fractures. Those blows were not instantly fatal, believe it or not. No, it took hours for Wesley to die. It was a long, cold, painful, and miserable death. And the ligature marks on Wesley's neck were consistent with the size and shape of the belt discovered later. Police found out very quickly it was Tommy and Timothy due to an earlier witness encounter that placed them at Wesley's apartment picking him up. And arrest warrants were immediately issued for them along with a bulletin for law enforcement to be on the lookout for Wesley's car, which had the vanity plates reading Wes Mode. And three days later, on December 22nd, an officer with the St. Regis Mohawk Tribal Police in Northern New York spotted Wesley's car in an area of the Mohawk Reservation near the Canadian border. Upon learning that the vehicle and its occupants were wanted for murder in Virginia, the tribal police stopped the car and immediately took them into custody. When he was arrested, Tommy had Wesley's wallet, and a search of Wesley's car revealed numerous items from Wesley's apartment that those two men stole. It had the belt used as a ligature and a pair of black boots saturated with Wesley's blood. Tommy subsequently attempted to flee from a room at the police station. And when he was subdued, he told the tribal police officers, it's a good day to die. He said he would rather die than spend the rest of his life confined in prison. He admitted it was his full intent to kill and rob Wesley Smith after he got acquainted with him. Totally crazy. In a letter, Tommy admitted beating Wesley to death before returning to Wesley's apartment to have, quote-unquote, a decent meal and change into Wesley's clothes and take a pleasurable trip to New York with the $200 he found in Wesley's wallet. Tommy further wrote that he left his boots all blood-covered for the Commonwealth and that he had no sympathy or remorse for beating Mr. Wesley Smith to death. In the same letter, he wrote, Death is just a game to me, and I will escape somebody and execute justice again. He vowed to kill the judge if he were not sentenced to death. Tommy's lawyers advised him not to mail that letter because they could have mounted a strong defense, but Tommy mailed them anyway. And like most murderers do just before they are executed, Tommy thanked Jesus Christ for coming into his life. Thomas Akers was pronounced dead at 9.18 p.m. at the Greensville Correctional Center here in Virginia.
and there were about 60 protesters that night, more than normal, in the field just outside the prison. Maybe the protesters were all his family and friends, who knows. Rest in peace to Wesley Brian Smith. 